I call to order the regularly scheduled meeting of the Federal Select Board. The time is 6 30 p.m. Uh, we do not have minutes to approve today, so we're going to move right into new business. Uh, our first item today um, is to designate a select board representative to the Union 38 contract negotiations, which we've actually already done, so we're going to shift right over that one. Uh, our next item is to designate a select board member to the Frontier Capital Committee. Uh, I did this the last two years. Um, I have a lot on my plate this year with the contract negotiations for the elementary school um, and the Sunderland Capital Committee, so I would very much like one of the other members to take that if that's possible. I can take that. Wonderful. Um, all right. Well, in that case, um, I nominate Crystal for the Capital Planning Committee negotiations. I can second it. Myself. Yeah. I'll yeah. second it. Yeah. All right. We have a motion made and seconded to appoint Crystal as the board member for the Frontier Capital Committee. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, to nothing. Okay. I'll let, I'll let Darius know. Wonderful. All right, our next new business is um, the Police Memorandum of Agreement for the Community Support Options Grant. Uh, we have a Community Support Options, uh, also known as CSO grant, that allows for a, um, a member of the... I apologize, I'm not getting video. Well, we're not getting video on the... On the I'm not sure why. Okay. It's set for video, but I'm not getting... I don't know. Okay. Oh, well. Be a body <laughs> um, the, we have a, a grant that we uh, we got last year and we got mm -hmm. another version of this year that allows for a police officer and a social worker to do ride alongs um, for mental health issues in not just our town, but also Deerfield, um, Conway, and Wheatley, um, the three towns, uh, four towns, sorry. Um, and this is a um, basically an amendment to the contract with the police union, allowing for those duties um, to be performed within the confines of our contract with them. Yeah. Um, we've already negotiated this out with the union, and uh, they find it difficult at the time. Yeah, very, uh, very little change. Um, we're specifying the uh, private duty detail rate for the current year. This is only a one year memorandum of agreement, so yeah. it would be renewed for next fiscal year. Yep. Yeah. Any questions for you, Crystal? No. All right. In that case, I would entertain a motion to accept and sign the yes. uh, memorandum of agreement for community support options grant. I motion we accept the uh, memorandum of agreement for the community support with the police department. All right. Seconded. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two nothing. Okay. Wonderful. Our last piece of new business will be to discuss the shared use path feasibility study um, with our kickoff meeting. What Can I, background? right before uh, we have Matt Chase and uh, Jim, Stutch. Jim, Jim, Zach. Zach, sorry about that, Jim. No worries. <laughs> uh, Matt, can you hear us? I can hear you fine, yes. Yeah, I can hear you fine. Can you hear okay, me? Okay, great. I apologize. We're having some video technical issues here tonight. Um, before um, before VHB starts, um, Frontier uh, Regional, uh, the Frontier Regional School Superintendent also asked for a select board rep, uh, one select board rep from the four towns to participate in Frontier Regional negotiations. Does the board have anything you'd like to direct me to pass along to the other towns regarding um, a designated select board rep? So for the past two years, she's... It's Sunderland has been the rep. Is that correct? Two out of three years, Sunderland. Two out of three. So I would request that, you know, if one of the other towns has availability to send somebody else, um, you know, from their select board, that would be great. I don't know what, you know, if historically, whether Whiteley's done it recently, Conway's done it recently. Okay. Um, but that would be great if one of the other towns had somebody available. All right. Yeah, I would, I would second that. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So I'll just go by the board's consensus, and I'll reach out to the other town administrators just to pass along yeah. the, the board's request. Yeah. And, you know, if they just absolutely can't, you know, talk to us, and we'll see if somebody has availability right now, you know. Okay. Yep. But I definitely feel like Sunderland has done our due in the last decade in that respect. Okay. All right. Wonderful. 
Right. All right, Jim and Matt. Yes. Okay. All um, right. I think the board is ready for you now uh, to discuss the project. Unfortunately, Dan Murphy couldn't uh, isn't here yet. Um, okay. You can share. Um, Dan okay. Murphy is here at the moment, but we are recording this on Zoom, so he'll be able to view it um, when when he's able to. Okay. And can you see my screen? I just requested to share. I, I said accept. Um, hopefully, we will be able to. Okay. Um, it says multiple. I think the problem with having this with our video. Don't know what to do. Um. Hmm. You haven't clicked here again. Yeah. Go ahead. Can you request to share again? I sure can. Hopefully that it works. Let's see. Oh, we there. got it. We got, got it. it. Excellent. <laughs> there we go. All right. Well, well, thank you for having us tonight. Um, as you know, my name is Jim Zach. I'm a professional engineer with the firm VHB, and my supervisor, Matt Chase, is in this meeting as well. Uh, we're excited tonight. This is the kickoff for um, a great shared use path study that will expand the regional bicycle pedestrian network um, that we're really excited to get started on. So with that, I will go through, let's see. So tonight, there's a few things I'd like to cover. Uh, first, the tasks that we're going to be performing as part of this study, the products that you'd be you'll be seeing at the end, and the general time frame as far as when these projects will be ready. Okay. Uh, I'll go over the project area map. Uh, give a little background and overview of the project and some of the local history. Uh, I'll go over Route 116's existing conditions. That's the corridor that this shared use path um, is going to follow. We'll go over the design standards and the parameters that we'll be using to do this feasibility study. Uh, and one of the important ones that's going to be one of our first tasks is to decide, is it going to go on the east or west side of Route 116? Mm -hmm. Um, that's an important one because we'd like to keep the shared use path consistent on one side and not have to cross the road on Route 116, obviously for safety reasons. Yeah. And then we'll have a little discussion at the end. So tasks. Well, this is our kickoff meeting tonight. As I mentioned, we're really excited to get going on this. Um, first thing we're going to do is put together plans for an alignment. So we need to sketch out the alignment on some on design plans. So we will have typical 24 by 36 plans at 40 scale where we'll have background information from aerial images and right of way um, that we'll use for sketching in the shared use path alignment. So once we have that, we're going to start looking at the preferred alignment um, this winter. And what that is, as I mentioned earlier, the first step we're going to need to do is decide which side of the roadway we'd like to have that on. Um, but during the fall and winter, we're going to look at different features, utilities, um, destinations, and a variety of other things to help us um, navigate that corridor. During the winter spring, we'll do some environmental due diligence. And that's essentially, we'll be looking at, are there environmental resources adjacent to the Route 116 corridor that, um, that we need to you know, take into account, such as wetlands. Um, so we'll see what is in the area and what's in close proximity to where we're proposing this shared use path. We'll also do some structural due diligence. Uh, there's areas along the corridor where we might need a, re a retaining wall, a small pedestrian bridge, or a boardwalk. Um, so we'll be looking at, you know, what type of structural features might be necessary for this path. And final deliverables, June 30th of next year. 
Um, this is part of a mass trails grant that the community received and everything needs to be completed by June 30th. So that's our deadline. Mm -hmm. And as part of the deliverables, you'll get plans with the preferred alignment that comes out of this study. We'll also prepare an order of magnitude construction cost estimate. So you'll have an idea of what type of dollars you're, you're looking at to build this project so it can be planned in the near future. And we will have a feasibility memorandum to go along with it um, to discuss how we how we got to this preferred alignment and some of the things that drove us and made us make our decisions and go in with the alignment. And this is a, just a basic area plan of the corridor. Uh, the northerly or westerly limit is the Waitley Park and Ride Lot. And it will continue along Route 116 for about 6.6 .6 miles and intersect with Meadow Street in the town of Amherst. And that will eventually connect to a planned path from UMass headed north. So a little bit of the background. The town was awarded the Mass Trails Grant of, at $195,090. And that's why we're here tonight. Um, we're here to perform and get started on this feasibility study. Uh, we understand the town has a vision to revitalize that village center, um, and I believe Stantec is working on that, and this path will go through that area. So we want to make sure that improvements that are planned for the village center are going to marry up with what we're proposing with the shared use path. Mm -hmm. uh, the intent of the path is to really provide safe and encourage safe alternative multimodal commuter and recreational travel options. So we're trying to make the corridor more attractive to bicycling, walking, and intermodal connection connections as well, because transit is serviced along there. So making better accommodations for people to access the transit routes. Mm -hmm. And let's see, and the connection is gonna go through multiple communities, Waitley, South Deerfield, and eventually connect up with UMass and Amherst, and then go to Hadley, where the Mass Central Rail Trail is. So that's that's the ultimate goal, is to get down to that Mass Central Rail Trail, as well as UMass. So what we're going to be doing is following the Route 116 state layout for this shared use path. So some of the general conditions of the roadway now. Uh, it's a two lane roadway and it is owned by the state and MassDOT is the one that oversees it. Uh, it's functional classification. It's, a, there's, it's primarily an urban principal arterial, but there are portions that are a rural minor arterial. And that's because the corridor straddles the urban and rural area. Uh, it's an important road. It's part of the national highway system. And that is an important network of roads throughout the nation um, that supports you know, the nation's economy, defense, mobility, and connects to various uh, public transportation facilities, intermodal facilities, airports. It's kind of the backbone of transportation throughout the country. So the Route 116 state layout, the width varies. Um, most of the corridor is about a hundred foot right of way. And that's from the east side to the west side. It's not just the, the paved area, but it includes those tree belt areas as well. Um, you'll see I have 55 feet to 300 feet. There's a small pinch point where it's about 55 feet, but it's a very short area. The section where it's 300 feet, and that's at the southerly portion in Amherst, where it's uh, partially a limited access highway. But the majority of that corridor is about a hundred foot right of way. Where's the 55 foot part? That part is, that's a good question. Bear with me one second. I'm just gonna pull up my notes here. It's at one of the intersections. Let's see. 
Bum, bum, bum. So let me pull up, I'm going to pull up a map here. It makes me wonder if it's near Plum Tree. I can't. Well, see, that's I believe. If it was like near Plum Tree yeah. or Plum Tree or. Yep. Bear with me one second. I'm just pulling it up on a map so you can see it as well. Let's see. But I believe you are correct. I believe it is near Plum, Plum Tree. Let's see. Sorry, my computer is a little, little slow here. Um, While you're looking that up, it's hard to yeah. believe that any part of 116 yeah. is, is considered <laughs> or classified as rural minor. <laughs> it's a yes. very, busy, very busy road. Yes, it's a small portion in the middle area. It just the roadway straddles off into the um, the rural area just for a very short section. Let's see, and I am just trying to find it. I apologize; it's taken me a minute here. I should have had that ready. Let's see. My computer is a little slow. Let's see. So, um, yep. Jim, Matt, yeah, Dan, sorry, it's taking a second here. The fine, file fine, unloading yeah. is pretty big. Dan Murphy so, is here now, just so you're aware. Oh, okay. Hello, Dan. Yes. Let's see. It's a small area where there's just a notch in, in the right of way. Is it, oh, is it oh, 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 Bill Hill Road, I think, maybe? Bill Hill is next down, about 60. Yeah. yeah. I'm wondering if it's near Palm Tree. Yeah, no, it's Bull Hill. It's Bull Hill, it's, it's Bull Hill uh -huh. just before the Bull parking Hill. ride. Yep. Just before the parking ride, thanks. <clears throat> Let's see, I can bring it up here. Awesome, thanks, Matt, oh. I appreciate it. Cool. I'm going to slide it over here a little bit. It's this area right here, near Bull Hill. Oh, Jim, you just still, you still have the presentation. And I think you're sharing the slide. Am I sharing the slide? Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Let's see. That's right. We'll probably all yeah. 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 I can't. I'd have to like cut. I'd have to cut the slideshow and and go yeah. into the. But I have it up. So when I finish the slides, I can bring it up and show you the exact little notch. The pavement width, the pavement width varies anywhere between about 40 and 50 feet. Uh, there's two travel lanes, as I mentioned earlier, uh, typically 12 feet in width. There's a few areas that are 19 feet, and that's at the area of the Sunderland Bridge. Shoulder widths, they vary from two to 10 feet with eight feet as typical. Um, the two foot also is in the area of the bridges, the Sunderland Bridge. And posted speeds range from 30 to 50 miles per hour. And the area is serviced by the Pioneer Valley Transit Authority. So, so some of the design standards and parameters that we'll be looking at are the state and federal design requirements. So um, since it's a mass DOT roadway, we're going to be following mass DOT design standards as well as their directives. Um, state has a separated bicycle facility design guide, so we'll be adhering to those design standards. And AASHTO has the Guide for Development of Bicycle Facilities, which is somewhat of the national Bible for um, the design standards for shared use path and related facilities. Uh, so the goal is to lay this shared use path out, as I mentioned earlier, within that state highway layout of Route 116. So for the shared use path, the minimum width we're looking at is 10 feet. Um, that is the minimum that MassDOT looks at and allows for their shared use paths within their right of way. 
Uh, we're looking for a two foot minimum buffer to obstructions. And that's if you're along the path, if there's a utility pole or similar structure, you need to have a buffer from that for the, for the walkers and bicyclists. Um, and also a five foot buffer to the paved area of Route 116. And as I mentioned earlier, we want to minimize any new crossings or have any new crossings on Route 116 for safety. So we're looking to tie into existing crossings, if at all possible, along the corridor. Okay, and this is a small little cross section of what I just went over with some of the design standards. Um, typically for an NHS National Highway System roadway, you have 12 foot lanes, eight foot shoulders, and that little section shows that right there, which is similar to what is along most of that corridor. Uh, you'll see a little five foot green buffer area, a little tree belt area, and then the 10 foot shared use path, and then a small two foot buffer to that utility pole on the right. So that's just to give you an idea of you know, in general, what we're going to be looking at or what the corridor will look at um, in the future. So in doing so, there's a, some things we want to consider while doing this study. Um, and one is the right of way. Uh, we want to keep this path within the state right of way for Route 116 to, so we don't have any type of right of way takings. Uh, utilities and drainage, uh, one of the, those are two big things we're gonna be looking at. Um, there's a overhead utility poles and wires that go and crisscross the corridor at various locations. So we're gonna make sure we navigate those. And there's also drainage for the roadway that is in the tree belt area um, and in a variety of areas along the corridor. So we have to make sure we maintain that safe roadway drainage for stormwater and that we navigate utilities. Connectivity, you know, we want to connect to as many features that are viable destinations and parking lots along the corridor. You know, there's parking at uh, the Mount Sugarloaf area. There's the pull-off area along Route 116. So we're going to look at what we can connect to along that corridor to make it more attractive to people to use for travel. So here's one is intersection crossings. We're gonna look at driveway crossings, mid-block crossings. And those are the, the, the main things we're gonna look at as far as when we're laying this out. You know, How many intersections do we have to cross? How many driveways are we crossing depending on the side we're on and where those mid-block crosswalks are now. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna look at environmentally sensitive areas. Um, those are primarily wetlands that might be along the corridor that we want to make sure we don't impact. Um, parking and trailheads are a big part of this study as well. Um, anytime you build one of these facilities, uh, parking is definitely um, a major factor. And we obviously want to have the, the path, um, logical trailheads where people get on and off the path. Destinations, as I mentioned, you know, places along the corridor that people will want to, to go to. So we want to make sure that we have connections to those and make it easy for people to get off the path and transition to the roadway if needed to get to them. Embankments. So along that corridor, it's Areas, there's a lot of areas that are flat, but there are some areas where along that roadway, there's some sloped areas. That, and those are the areas that we're gonna look at um, if we need some type of retaining wall or, um, or if we have to do some extensive grading in order to fit the shared use path in. Um, and, and the biggest thing, this is a 6.6 .6 mile feasibility study. Um, that's very, that's a large project. So we're looking at how this could possibly be segmented into multiple projects that could go for different types of state and federal funding. Uh, the, the 
chances of this getting funded as one 6.6 .6 mile project is um, it, the chances aren't very likely. However, if you segment the project into um, logical sections, um, you can build this project over time. Don't say so, it's impossible, though. What was that, Dan? <laughs> Don't say it's impossible. It's not impossible. I said it's 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 a difficult. So um, you know, <laughs> I, it's challenging. But I I I play the Powerball here and there, so you never know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but that is a big one. The construction funding is is securing that and having the and having the project in section. So depending on when when funding becomes available or you know funding is becoming available, you can plan around that in order to get this path built. Um, independent utility, uh, you know, we want to make sure we demonstrate to the state that this is a viable transportation project that will be a benefit to the community and once constructed will be used by the, the communities. Um, and that is the presentation I have. If it's okay, I'd like to close out of this. I'd like to share my my other screen so I can show you that pinch point and some of the areas we're looking at um, possibly breaking into segments. And we're just scratching the surface. So these by no means are set in stone. So let's see, can get out of this. And then here we go. see let me know when you can see the aerial imagery yeah yeah okay great thank you so the pinch point is right here this is brush hill road bull hill or oh, bull hill road I'm, i apologize no. it's right here this is the pinch point it's a jog in the right of way right at the intersection and for some reason when it was laid out, you can see this is the the wider 100 foot right away. It narrows in to accommodate the roadway coming in. And then it transitions back out to a 100 foot right of way. So that is the one pinch point in the, the corridor. Um, other than that, it's primarily, as I mentioned, 100 foot right of way and um, to the south in Amherst, it's a 300 foot right of way where it's a limited access highway. And as I mentioned, it's a 6.6 .6 mile project. Um, so segmenting it is, is something that you're gonna need to do in order to get this built over time. Um, so this is just a quick little sketch here of you know, how we were potentially looking at sections. Um, this is the Waitley Park and Ride lot. You know, and we were looking at a section that travels along here and goes up to the Sunderland Bridge. Um, it's got the Mount Sugarloaf area here. Um, we're treating potentially the bridge as its own segment and getting over that. Um, and then, as I mentioned, we're going to be going through the village center. Um, so that will be a set, could be a segment as well. Um, and as I mentioned, we were looking at areas where the destinations and trailheads have some type of parking or some area where people can pull off the park in order to access the shared use path. So this segment here from the village center area, this is Garage Road. And heading down to the pull-off area, we we're looking at as a potential segment. And then another segment picking up from there, heading further south and to the area of Plum Tree and East Plum Tree Road, where there's the bus pull-offs and the um, crossing. And then potentially another segment heading further south into Amherst, down to the intersection with Meadow Street, where the project ends to the south. Um, that would be its own segment as well. And again, the, with this is really conceptual. We're just kind of getting into the project. These are not set in stone, but we were looking at, you know, how can we break this down into logical pieces that can be 
designed and built over time and function. Um, and obviously the goal is to co connect into a, a path coming from the University of Massachusetts up to Meadow Street and connecting obviously to the, the university as well. Um, and then the Mass Central Trail is, is to the south. So that is the general overview of what we're gonna be doing. Um, as I mentioned, the first thing we're looking at now is, um, you know, which side of the street should we lay out the shared use path, which is the most logical side. Uh, what, what we'd like to do is, is kind of solidify that early now so that when we march forward, we we're marching forward on, on the side, we're going to be, we're going to be doing the entire study on. Um, and tonight we're here, I'm here to, you know, I want to hear some feedback from um, yourselves. This, if there's, you know, anything particular you, you, you would like to see, is there a particular side that you think is more advantageous um, right now? We're, we just did a quick look through and, the east side is looking to be a little bit more favorable. Um, reason being is some of the areas are a little bit more level, so we're not working with slopes as much. Um, the overhead ut utilities and the utility poles, there's there seems to be fewer of those on the east side. And you know some of the vegetation um, on the west side is actually seems closer to the roadway. Um, whereas on the east side, it's a little bit more clear. Um, Which is side. So yeah, yeah, the Meadow Street intersection yep. in Amherst can be pretty yep. hazardous in vehicles. So I think if yep. you know, with, with safety in mind for pedestrians and bicyclists, it might make a yep. little. It might make more sense to not have to cross one sixteen there. Oh, but also right? most of the the points. Yeah. The trailheads you're looking at are on that side. That's right. Also. So if we're so talking about the barbecue side is the east side. Yes. The east side. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the parking place, yep. the um, Sugarloaf Mountain, the all, yeah. all that stuff yeah, on that side. Yeah. Um, the, the bridge already has the pedestrians on that side of the bridge. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, 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 there is one side that doesn't. That it's like screaming right. better. Right. So because... that side right near Bum Tree is pretty steep. That's and, true. Yeah, that's true. But there's also there's there's but not goes on both sides. So right. one way or the other, we're going to cross some stuff. Right, and then then again, obviously, I'm sure they know it. There's that little giant culvert bridgey thing across from down near where the where the water is. Um. Past Plum Tree, going towards the O's, Hubbard's old house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so there's, some, there's, some, there's a bridge, a couple bridges. I mean, yeah. yeah it looks just fine. Yeah. Yeah. Challenge. If we keep it on yes. the side, in theory, we, we make it so that the pedestrians never have to cross 116. That's the yeah. big thing. Like, I don't care if they cross yeah. Broad Road or Bull Hill or yeah. whatever, right. but if they have to cross 116, that's a yeah. real hazard. Yeah. If we keep it all yeah. inside, Meadow Street, the entrance is going to be on that side. Yeah. And it said Sugarloaf yeah. uh, Mountain is on that side, all of the other spots are on that side. Mm -hmm. So I would certainly lean towards. Right, it. because even there, that's a nice little, you don't even have to cross to go up to the water tower or Pine Cook side. Yep. Right. You've got, you know, quite a bit off that side of it. Yep. You just do have some, you have more steep stuff on that mm -hmm. side, like across from Lauren Ives' farm stands, kind of steep. But again, you know, that's what retaining walls and stuff are for. Yep. The other side seems more level. You don't have the steepness on the other side, but again, utilities are going to be tough. Yep. And there are established crossings. There are a number of established crossings um, that are along 116. So if, you know, if these people have real destinations, right. there are places along the way that they could. Yeah. I just would prefer people who are trying to go end to end, I prefer yeah. them to stay on one yeah. side the entire time. Oh, yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. So I think that makes sense. Yeah. At least yeah. for, for now, to look at these. these yeah. 
no, those are those are excellent points. Not having to cross one sixteen is is definitely a goal, and utilizing those existing crossings and not having to have new ones, um, mm. you know that that's that's definitely a great goal um, for safety. Um, um, the, the only sort of flip side to that is we currently have the little bit of sidewalk we do have currently is mostly on the other side of the road between like the 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 um, the Sutherland Markets and yeah. down to, you know, Sugar Pass Cross. Yeah, Sugar Pass Cross. Yeah, sure. All that on that yeah. side of the road. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. it seems like we might also be working against what we currently have. I think, some, I think there's some that even has mm -hmm. a little more on the east side that comes south. Mm -hmm. A little Section bit. There's, there's definitely more to go up the Amher old Amherst Road. Because that, yeah. that, but that, it's also that. by no means complete or, yeah. or even... Mm -hmm. The majority of the road had it happened yet. So if we end up having to sort of undo some of the the, the past part that we've done, or, or great, some some parts of the team might have sidewalk on both sides of the road. You know, and you might make recommendations of where crossings would we may need to we may want a crossing, right? Conceivably, yes. Yeah. Conceivably, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and I'm just looking at some of the existing sidewalk here, and here. You know, you've got a crossing here now. So obviously, if we came up through here, we'd want to obviously take advantage of that. Um, so if there's an area that, you know, is ideal for a crossing, it can, it can be done safely, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think the overwhelming tone here is is safety along this corridor um, mm -hmm. is, kind of, is pinnacle. So. And there may be areas where, you know, if DOT is taking on some of this, they may want um, a shady's path on both sides. We've been seeing that request coming from them, depending yeah. on depending on where village centers are, where there's housing, mm -hmm. you know. So um, we we, can't, we can never really predict how DOT is going to view that. They kind of hit us with some curveballs every once in a while. But I think you know, in areas where there's dense housing, and it might be the village center where you need the shady's path on both sides. Um, ah. From Cliffside all the way to the village. Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But well, at least that's section we already have. Uh -oh. <clears throat> yeah, you have a sidewalk on that side, right? Yeah, we already have a sidewalk on that side for that chunk. So if, if we were working on the east side of the road from there, we would end up with sidewalk on both sides. So. Yeah. yeah yep. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So have you have you done schedule already when the what the schedule is? Yeah, they did. Okay, yeah. All right. yeah. good. Yeah. I was just gonna say, um, uh, what are the things you're looking for from us? I know we've got a match. Yeah. We got a CPA match. Did you have to go through all that too? Yeah. And we get we get a track. We, no, time. we didn't. What, we didn't what, touch on the CPA match, or yeah. I think you have an in kind match as well, Dan, from a yeah, yeah. Yes, perspective. So, so we basically so, have to keep keep track. Go ahead, go ahead, Matt. I, I was just going to say, so in order to, I know, and we'll work with you on the invoicing. We did see that email, um, so we can we can coordinate that when we get a little more further along. Um, but I, I'm assuming that as part of that through Mass Trails, you'll have to, you know, provide documentation of the hours worked for those who are, um, you know, engaging with us and going through and tracking that time, Dan, like we talked about, you know, as the, when the grant went in. So we want to make sure that... Um, whatever that process is on your end. I know Dan and I talked at one point about putting a committee together on your end or having a few people that might, you know, meet with us or on a Zoom or walk the corridor or what have you, um, that we're at least doing that in a fashion that fits your schedule and then it's not all crammed in at the end um, so that you get your match. And I don't remember what the monetary in-kind match is versus the CPA funds, but... Um, you know, there's some hours there that need to be put in by by town staff. So we just want yeah. to make... yeah, go, I was gonna say one, I, one, yeah, thing go we did, one thing we did get an okay on was that we could use uh other town staff. So and I know you're probably gonna want to reach out to the wetlands folks, the conservation folks in, in, in all the towns, maybe and uh, get some feedback there. But then we're allowed to use other towns time for the match, which is good. Sure. Yep. Yeah. The one thing that I would ask, and I, I probably won't be here at that time, but the one thing that I would ask is when BHB is ready to reach out to the other towns, yep. I think that's when we want to actually inform the other towns of this and send them the the logs uh, to to track time. I, I think it's too early to to do it right now, but 
will want to do that when VHB is ready to reach out to them. Definitely. And who else are you thinking you'd, you'd, you'd like input from? Uh, it... Well, we already reached out to DOT to try to get some record information, right, Jim? So, I mean, yeah. I think, I think um, once we do a little more fact finding and, um, and, and hone in on the impacts, there might be certain aspects we need to talk about with either DPW or, yeah. um, you know, CONCOM or anybody else, uh, that sort of thing, um, whether okay. it's, whether it's maintenance or, you know, locations of, you know, mailboxes, utility poles, what those kinds of things, those little things. So we have some sort of standard that we're assuming for our, the project as a whole, but okay. we'll, we'll, we'll come up with that kind of list of, of folks that we think you might want to pull in emergency, you know, might want to have a meeting with some emergency staff, um, you know, when we get into some of the crossings and things like that, but just to get some overall support and buy-in. So then we'll more, sh more widely share that log sheet to yes. everybody who's involved. <laughs> yes. Um, I have reached out at that one of the grant requirements was reaching out to, um, uh, Natural Heritage Endangered Species Program. So I've reached out to them. They asked for some information, and I think we're going to be having some sort of preliminary discussion about the project. I've made it clear to them that there is no construction in this project, so I'm hoping we can, uh, you know, minimize uh, communication with them uh, because there's no construction. But does VHB want to be copied on any correspondence between the town and them? Yeah. Are you absolutely. interested in that? Okay, then I'll forward you the email I sent today and we'll mm -hmm. keep you um we'll keep you in the loop on further communications. Okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess is there any other questions or any other um you know, anything else you want to discuss related to that? As I mentioned, the first thing we're going to do is um try to make the case for which side of the road to go on, which is obviously going towards the east. And that's something that we want to uh, document, um, you know, in detail, just because we have, we're going to have to share that with the state as well. So when we go to mass DOT, they're going to say, well, why did you want it on the east side? And we're going to have that, that, that documentation on the reasons why, or if we decide on the west side. Um, so that's going to be our first um, overall task. Um, it sounds like the group is in favor of the east side. We're going to further evaluate it because, as I mentioned, we're just kind of starting the project. Um, is this something that you want us to, to share once we have everything? You know, do, we, do you want us to speak to Dan or who, do, who would you like us to coordinate with um, once we get that? Or if you want us to come back for a quick um, you know, quick meeting just to show you what we found. I'm comfortable with either you sharing that with Dan and Dan being yep. able to pass around or yep. emailing the town administrator yep. with either the market yep. or our new town administrator should be starting to yeah. um, and they can send it to the three of us. I think okay. either one of those. All right. yep. well, okay. One thing I want to mention, Dad, I don't think anybody mentioned the village center committee, just about to wrap up their report. Um, so we'll definitely get you a copy of that uh, to look at, particularly when you're looking at the yeah. the village setup piece. Okay, sure. And 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 Dan, just a, a little more info on, you know, we're going to put together, I think, a very just quick summary matrix or something east versus west side and pros and cons, something very high level. Um, I'm just envisioning anything that goes to DOT. We come out hard with the east side they say well did you look at the west side at least that way we can say we looked at it and here's why we chose to stay on the east side um and yeah. that'll be documented so would it would it give the project a little extra backbone that um umass already has the priority trail system uh future priority trail marked out from the mullen center up to meadow street would that would that help our argument to keep it on the east side I think I think that helps. I think that was noted in the Mass Trails grant. I think there was some documentation in there as well. So, but we'll that's a that's something we can incorporate as part of the reasons why that are in here, along with the bridges and where the sidewalk is now and things like that. Yeah. So, when you're looking at that right away, is there anywhere on the east side where there isn't enough room and different considerations will have to be made? And I know sometimes those roadways aren't even, they're, you know, pretty heavy on one side or the other. Right. 
I know we are saw we, that on Plum Tree Row, and it was like some places it was like almost up to the pavement, and then the other side it was huge. Sure. So one one of the things I think we'll look at when we get into this is, you know, is the roadway centered in the right way? And if it's not, and I think in some areas it may not be, and we'll see some utility poles might need to be relocated. And if it becomes uh, too many poles to relocate, then we might show an alternative to say, well, you know, what if we adjusted the shoulder? Can we petition a waiver to DOT when the time comes to reduce the shoulder width? You know, and I'm only talking if we can buy, you know, another couple feet or something to that effect. Um, but that's 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 some of the things that I think we'll look at. If there's a pinch point area, we might look at options of either, you know, potentially shifting the roadway if if needed, only in short segments um, to accommodate something less than the impacts. And it will depend on what the impact is. Um, permitting is going to be one of the things that we'll look at from a high level is what the permitting in, impacts would be. You can't have more than 5,000 square feet of wetland impacts because that's a, a variance through DEP and those aren't granted for shared use paths and they're hard to get in any case. So we'll want to make sure that we stay under that, that threshold. Um, but there's, you know, it's things like that, that we'll have to consider, but that's a good point on the, on the roadway and whether it's centered in pinch points, we haven't gotten there yet, but we will. So it would be a fair thing to say that the, the concern there is the overall road width at those pinch points, not necessarily which side of the road has the space because we can always repaint the lines a little bit to the left or the right a little bit to give ourselves to steal from one side to the other side. It's more just about the overall right way in those pinch points. Is that, is that a fair thing? I, I think so. I was trying to follow you. There was a little echo yeah. on my end when you were speaking. So. Oh, yeah. uh, I was just saying that like the, the concern seems to be more that the the pinch points is that the overall width of the road, not necessarily whether that, that road has that extra width on the right or the left, because we can always change where the road is Correct. within that right of way. It's it's that from the left and the rightmost parts of that road right way, do we have enough room for the for the two? That's really the real question. Correct. Correct. Okay. And I know Jim mentioned eight feet for NHS roadways, and that is a requirement. So, you know, is there a way that we can petition DOT to narrow some of the shoulders to get away and, and do maybe some kind of traffic calming for 116 if there is a, a constraint somewhere? Um, I know this corridor has a history of high speeds and crossings are not, you know, ha haven't been always safe in, in a lot of areas. So maybe if there's a way to, if there's a way to justify that there's a pinch point, like we're going to, whatever, fill wetlands or move 20 utility poles or whatever it is. And, and I'm just hypothetically throwing out things like that. Um, you know, are there other alternatives that DOT would be willing to consider to minimize impacts? Um, you know, could we go to an eight foot shared use path instead of a 10 foot shared use path for mm -hmm. 500 feet to lessen impacts to wetlands? Um, and I think that would be something that DOT would consider. So we'll, we'll, we'll locate where those are and provide, you know, some information on that. So things to consider when uh, survey is performed at some point in the future to further the design and move the design forward. At least it's things that can consider for the DOT can consider before you know things get moved further in the design. Yeah, one one thing I suggest when you do that is uh, I mean one thing you can call out when you talk about the two different sides is note those places where we might want to add a crossing because if you've got you got a shady path on one side, people are going to come up to the end of the road. They're not going to want to go six hundred feet down the road to get to it. Exactly. Yeah, but, we'll, like, we'll look at the end old Amherst jumps out of me just because maybe that's a good place. We're talking about we, the village center community talked a ton about calling and yeah. crossings and all sorts for the for the immediate yep. area of the village. But the, any place where you think we might need something like that, no matter what side we're on, uh, that would make sense. That'd be good. Good to add. You know, as, as a reason, as a justification, if you needed three. So three big upgrades if you put on one side, but you only need one or two or the other kind of thing. Yep. Is there, um, I don't think there is, but there's um, an elementary school behind yeah. the solar field. And I don't, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of the, the, the school. But that's there's Elmer. 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 Why is it? <laughs> there we go. All right. There's no, um, I guess there's we no direct. Path there. We want to pass through there someday. Well, I was going to say, is there any way that is there's no direct access from from 116 to that, right? They're all coming no, in. No, but from... on the north side there, you could sneak through if we had a good path up to it. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a way to get through there. but there, uh, there, yeah. Okay. I, yeah, okay. Take That's, a look that, at that for sure. 
Well, that's what I was at. I was just asking because I mean, there's you know, it looks like there's a little little wetland there. Maybe you got to cross it, but we could we could easily note that as a future you know connection, um, things like that. Yep. And then obviously, once you get further like down closer to Amherst, you have a lot of the you know strip businesses and the apartment complexes, and you know that might be. I think that's the area that always is uh, a subject of pedestrian crossing. So it might be, we talked about a shared use path on both sides of the road. You know, there might be, just like you were saying, Dan, you might have to provide a shared use path to get to a crossing so that people aren't just mid-block crossing in the middle of nowhere, jaywalking or whatever sure. you want to call it to get to the other side. So there'll be some thought to that and we might have to, you know, highlight some of those areas to consider how the, how that connect connectivity happens. Yeah, you know, the other thing I'd say is just, Think about the bus service too, because then we get the park and watch south of O's. Yep. Um, and I've talked to PBT about bus service too. That there's no there's no stop on the other side of the road, so it's it's a little bit strange. But uh, just think think about those things too. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, great. Thank you. Okay. Anything yeah. else from the board? Yeah. Oh, I'm good. All right. I think we're good on our end. Okay, great, and we'll we'll be in touch shortly with that summary for the east and west side, so we can um, make a final decision and march forward with it. Wonderful. Okay. All right. Thank you for your time. We really appreciate Thank all you. the work. We're looking right. forward. It's a great project, and it's going to be great for everyone. All right. All right. Great. Thank you. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye all right. That was our last piece of new business. Um. Under old business for select board updates. Um, Dan, you want to? I did it. Well, I wanted it. And it's a little, uh, the South County Senior Center, uh, we had basically a meeting. And they're basically going through the report for the, the, where to put, where to study the two uh, lo two locations. They had three, and now they had narrowed down to two. Mm -hmm. And they had they had a public meeting. Uh, I didn't attend it, but they had a public meeting. And a lot of the comments came in. And there was a general feeling that, Sad as I hate to say it, but the Plum Tree Road site is just a little bit out of the way. And yep. uh, it's, it's, way down, it's down the end of the corner. So they, they only, they, we did kick around maybe trying to raise some more money to look at all three. But hearing all the feedback that uh, was given from the meetings and from basically everything I heard, I didn't have a big problem saying, well, it probably doesn't make sense. I and didn't, the other two are Wheatley? The Wheatley, the Wheatley site, and the old church in, in Deerfield. Okay. okay. Yeah, so those, those are the two they're going to look forward to. They're going to basically, basically price those out a little bit more. Which, and that makes sense. Those are a lot more close, a lot closer to the center of population mass yep. than our yep. site is. Yep. So I, obviously, you always would argue for that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I, as much as I hate to let it go, uh, yeah, it, it, it made the most sense. So that's, that's my only update. Great. And we're still thinking about a, a consortium, 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 which would kind of give, instead of, instead of being like the select board reps, uh, the, the board would have more power, and I guess it would be able to manage property and, and actually uh, uh, buy property, I guess, mm -hmm. in some respect. So, still kicking that around. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about if there's any desire to make a change, but I think there's still the same point is still the with the buildings you're looking at would be you know, public one of the towns or well, the three towns would pitch in to buy it, or one town would do it. So, that we're still trying to figure it all out because it's a, it's a lot of money, it's a big project. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it was real, real, real years, but they're trying to put some numbers to sites and see where we go. Right. So, I just want Dan, just in case you mm -hmm. have a huge desire to do this. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, prior to you getting here, I got voted in as the um. Rep for capital for frontier. Sure. If you just have this really heartfelt need to be on that committee for frontier for frontier's capital. Yeah. Not so not for our town one, but for the frontier. Frontier. Yeah. Oh, when do they meet? No. I, like I said, I said I would do it. Oh. But if you oh really no no no, if you're happy really to do it, I'm happy. Want to do I'm it? I'm happy to let you. I am going to <laughs> step back if you do this. Uh, uh, I'm getting weak in me. Well, just now, I don't get that. I don't have any questions. Well, thanks. For myself, um, I did have a topic. So, for everyone's knowledge, we did make an offer to Becky Torres, the new council administrator. That offer was conditionally accepted, which is very excited for the town. Uh, I did have an opportunity to discuss uh, her contract with her um, 
the end of last week. Um, I guess my question to the board is, do we want to discuss that? Do we want to do I mean, We have uh, executive session on the schedule. Do we want to go into executive session to discuss that? I think it, tonight would probably be a good time to go into executive session. I do think this is going to be a fairly seamless um, contract negotiation, but for the purposes of, of discussing strategy with respect yeah. to it, mm -hmm. you might want to go into executive session and then reconvene an open session just to adjourn. Okay, so we'll, we'll do that. But before we do that, um, time to for updates. Oh, yes, I have several. Okay, I was going to touch on the new town administrator as well. Um, I do have a request for the board. Um, Becky, um, the Finance Committee is meeting tomorrow night. Becky has offered to come to the Finance Committee meeting. I think it's important for her to be there, actually, because we do have current budget, um, current year budget issues, and we're going to start talking about next budget cycle as well. So for her to get in on the very start of this is important. Sure. She's going to be there. My question to the board, and I have talked to her, is would the board allow Becky to come on as a part-time non-benefited employee just for this transition period before she officially starts under her contract on November 12th. So she and I can, can go over things going on in the office. She can attend a finance committee meeting here and there. She could attend a select board meeting. Um, I just, I, I think it's fair to pay her for her time that she's, mm -hmm. that she's doing this. Um, the, the rate would be 43.50, the same as me. Um, and I, I, I don't believe we'd go over 30 hours a week in any of the given weeks. So we'd still be, um, we'd still you be. You and her combined? Me, right there? Combined. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Combined. Yeah. Okay. So, um, absolutely. From my perspective, that makes a lot of sense. I want to get her is, is, you know, in as fast as possible and getting up to speed as soon as possible. Um, and I fully believe that people should take her work they do. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense to me. Um, any other discussion from the members of the board? That's fine. At this time, I would entertain a motion to bring Becky on as a non-benefited part-time employee for the transitional period at the rate of $43 an hour. Is that correct? $43? $43.50. $43.50 an hour. Yes, you're so moved. Yes, you sure. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. All right. The next thing is that I have spoken with David, the chair of the Energy Committee. Um, they have a couple of items that they would like to bring to the select board as appointment as an appointment on November 12th. Uh, the first is um, to discuss the possibility of a level, um, sorry, one or possibly two level three EV charging stations mm -hmm. to town. They'd like to get the board's feedback. On that, um, there is a company that is willing to donate the EV charging stations, and obviously, there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of things to consider with this. You know, what's going to be the cost to the town as opposed to the cost um, to the individuals that are charging their vehicles? Um, you know, what are the pros and cons? So they want to discuss that. No, I know that Northampton recently just changed from a free charging scheme to a charging the users to use yeah. them. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I'm assuming there would be a, a budget neutral way of doing that in town. We'd be able to... The select board would approve the rates to be charged and you're going to be... The, the town would be going... The Energy Committee will be able to discuss with you in yeah. much more detail, but yeah, but um, yeah, there, there would be some, um, there would be a, a company that the town would be dealing with that would be charging for the electricity. So it's it's going to be up to the board to, to set the rates. Great. Great. Um, and then uh, they also want to discuss um, their work on exploring siting uh, for a transfer station on town-owned land. Um, they, they've exhausted um, their efforts um, on Reservation Road, and I filled David in on the issues that we're having up at Reservation Road. So that's that's going to be a no-go, but they're still talking about the possibility of a transfer station on town on land on Bull Hill Road mm. or doing some sort of regional agreement to share a transfer station with another neighboring community. So they'd like to come on November 12th. So I told them that I'd bring that to you. Okay. Um, Finance Committee meeting tomorrow night. I already talked about it. We're going to be talking about um, current year budget issues, uh, developing a budget memo for FY25, um, and um, uh, the, the committee is going to organize because the committee has lost its chair. Sarah Smorowski has sadly resigned mm -hmm. um, after giving after giving much consideration. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she's so we're going to the, the committee is going to um, reorganize tomorrow night as well. So we'll be going through a number of things tomorrow night and I'll report to the board on the 28th. Um, and the last thing is that I'm going to pass these little stickers around. The town clerk had a little contest um, for the elementary school kids. 
Um, the contest was an art contest for I voted stickers for the coming election. This one, um, this one, and I, we don't have video, unfortunately. You'll have to go see Wendy for the things. You can pass those around, though. This one is first and second grade, the winner. That's third and fourth, and that's fifth and sixth. These are the winners, the three. So those will be the I voted stickers on state election day. Yeah, I saw these online. And they're adorable. They're, they're, this, what a great idea. And then yeah, um, this is really, I think, something that, you know, every year we should probably, even, you know, just for a local. Oh, it's wonderful. I think they're just so cute. It really is. And it gets the kids involved at a young age, which is which is great. Um, the deadline to register to vote for the state election, if a person is not already registered to vote in Sunderland, is um, 5 p.m. on October 26th uh, in the town clerk's office. So that's going to be the deadline to register to vote. 17-year-olds um, who are going to be 18 on or before November 5th must also register to vote by the October 26th deadline. And if they are 18 on November 5th, lucky them, they get to vote. Um, and then early voting begins on Saturday, October 19th, and the hours that day will be from 8 a.m. to noon. And all other early voting dates and hours are going to be on the town's website. I think that's all I've got. Cool. Great. All right, at this time, I would obtain a motion to go into executive session. So um, here, um, the motion will be right here. Motion to move to uh, motion to uh, uh, to go to MGL for MGL 30A 3021A to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. Uh, go for vote. So yes. Motion to go into executive session. Hi, Crystal Bird from Bar. Hi, Gamer. Hi, Dana Ware. Have a good night, guys. Thank you. All, All right, right. take care. All right, that is coming up then. It is 7 33. Uh, and the board adjourn. will reconvene only to adjourn, in open session only to adjourn. Thank you, Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, let's sit down.